on their face. You do not see that in Caucasians who smoke. The way that you can tell they smoke is that you can look at their fingers where they hold the cigarette and see the actual nicotine deposit in the skin or see the discoloration on their teeth. But you can't look in their face and tell whether they're smokers or not because they don't have the melanin that actually circulates the light through the skin for you to see if it is actually now dysfunctional or not working because of the reaction of the nicotine. So it's not coincidental that the smoker also, who is melanin down, especially has problems with loss of sensory perception. That is, that they can get burned easy because now the melanin that would normally feel the heat, because it's not active, they don't feel that anymore. So they get numbness in their hands, tingling in their hands, tingling in their feet. They also begin to lose their sense of taste. And they have to start using much more salt, eating more spicier foods, etc., because the melanin molecule now, excuse me, the nicotine in the cigarette smoke is now actually diminishing the entire sensitivity of the nervous system. So I'm like, oh, now this is very, very interesting. So when they have this old adage, one man's medicine is another man's poison, very, very true in the case of nicotine and being melanin recessive or melanin dominant. Now, we went on to look at some other interesting things. We went on to find out, for example, that the melanin loves fat. It loves fat. And so anytime there's fat put in the body, it actually binds to the melanin molecule and is used very slowly. And in many circumstances, it's recycled. So therefore, melanin-dominant individuals do not have to have high-fat diets to maintain their body fat. Because when they eat that, it's actually bound to the melanin molecule and recycled. So therefore, there was a whole story in a study, some hospitals have been doing studies on African women to find out why it is that they're the most fattest women in the world. Now, obviously, I know the answer. It's because they have a substance in their body that loves fat already. And so therefore, if they eat diets that are extremely high in fat, animal fat especially, hamburgers, meat of any type that is high in fat, because their body will already store fat, and they put extra fat inside their bodies, and they don't release it because the melanin binds it on. That's why they're the fattest women in the world, because they eat inappropriately for their body, metabolism, physiology, and structure. Now I said, well, that's real interesting, because now why would we have this gift? I'm always into looking at everything as a gift, not a problem. So when you look at it as a gift, then that automatically then gives you insight as to how you can use it for your advantage, not to reject it. So I'm like, okay, now the Creator gave us this gift. We can eat just a little fat and we'll keep it for five years. Now what's the, what's the reason for that? Well then when I went back and looked at, well where do all these people live primarily that have this propensity to store fat? And they live in an area that is very hot and that most of the foods there have very little fat. So if you're living at the equator and it's 110 degrees every day, if you know anything about energies, sugar, fat, and protein, when it is broken down by the body, gives off energy. That's why we eat. Out of all the three building blocks of the body, the fat molecule gives off the highest concentration of energy. So that is to say that if it was 110 degrees outside, and if you killed an animal and sat down and ate it, you would overheat your body and would have a heat stroke. Not because it was too hot outside, but because you ate a substance that when your body breaks it down, gives out so much heat that from the heat from the outside and the heat that's generated from within, it would totally, totally short circuit your normal functioning capacity. Now, all you have to do is just try this out today. The last time I heard it was 92 degrees. So now you just go to Kentucky Fried Chicken or McDonald's or someplace and get you a hamburger. And just sit there and eat it. And see what happens to you in a half hour. Just sit right there on the bench and just eat it and see what happens to you in a half hour. You will become so miserable you cannot stand it. 
And so your natural reaction is going to be that you want something that has ice in it, something that's cold, or you got to get to the air conditioner fast. And this is very interesting because when I was a child, I was very concerned one year. I was to be about seven years old, and that's all I heard was sirens going up and down the street and on the news. They were cautioning everybody about it being too hot and having heart attacks. Now, this was before it was popular for everybody to have air conditioning. And they were even giving out fans to the older people to cool them down. Because with the temperature being so hot this time of this particular summer, so many people were having heart attacks that the hospitals couldn't help them. And I said, what is happening? As a little kid, I said, what is happening that would cause, excuse me, that would cause so many people to have heart attacks? But when I began to do the study years, years later, I recognized that again, all these people forgot about the normal physiology okay, of the food constituents, and they were all sitting there this hot summer eating this meat. But because there were no air conditionings and they didn't have any fans, it was overheating their bodies, and they were actually having heart attacks and angina and were having, going, having to go to the hospital. So now I recognize that we can tolerate an enormous amount of heat when we eat properly and eat in alignment with our normal physiological structure. Now let me tell you about heat and the melanin molecule. Carol Barnes writes a lot about this. This is how he got interested in doing the research on melanin. <laughs> okay, thank you. He um, was given an assignment to find out what he could do to insulate the wiring of a high projectile object so that it would not short circuit electrically while going through space. This was a project that this his company he worked for was being contracted by NASA to figure out. If you remember the Sputniks and all these other objects they were projecting in outer space, they all burn up before they could get out of the stratosphere. And the reason why is because the electrical wiring would set the object on fire because when it would go through space, the friction would overheat it and it would actually start a fire. So their thing is like, we got to have a means of communicating with this thing. It's got to have electrical wiring, but how can we get it through the stratosphere to outer space and it not burn up? So again, because they've been doing research on melanin since the 1700s, they knew that melanin had a wonderful capacity, that it could be exposed to high temperatures and actually drop the temperature by 50 to 60 percent even though it was exposed to high temperatures and maintained its normal metabolic functioning. So they have found out that the melanin molecule can be exposed to up to 1,500 degrees of temperature and only lose 50% of its normal functioning. And that it also can drop the temperature after exposure by 50%. So therefore, Carol Barnes and his company made synthetic melanin, incorporated it into the rubber that enclosed these electrical wires, and that's how these objects are now being able to get out of space, because they are all insulated in line with artificial melanin that covers the wiring system. So then that really says something about you then, because now here you are, it's only 92 degrees outside and you have a substance within you that has the capacity to absorb heat and dissipate it so that you don't even get hot. Why would you be fanning and why would being in 90 degree weather be a problem for you? Normally it wouldn't if the melanin was functioning properly or if you hadn't put something in your body that caused the melanin to get overheat. So what we see is many people who have, who are African people who talk about they can't stand the sunshine, they can't stand the heat, they've come in contact with a substance that has bound itself to the melanin molecule where the melanin molecule is not functioning normally anymore. So the key here is not an inability to be able to deal with sunlight and to deal with high temperatures, but we are looking at a toxic reaction. So therefore that means that with